Hey everybody, welcome back to Talking Teddy Bear Simulator, Maze. Uh, we've got Vladdy, the Russian asshole, with us. Sorry for dropping a swear bomb right on you there, but uh, he is a little bit of a D. Uh, however, he is handy for kicking computers, making them work. Uh, apparently going into a bunch of wires to allow us out of that room that was locked. And just general comedy relief. So, he's good for a, f a few things. Now, uh, we found this nuclear fuel rod, which can only be used in somewhere with, you know, radioactive stuff. And something unlocked in a nuclear area that I'm guessing is now back here. Where the... this button is that we can't... yeah, so the nuclear reactor. And... This was blocked, it is now not blocked, so here we go. Try not to be an idiot in there, it would be very bad. Let me stay here, in case you do something <laughs> He's also, uh, quite motivating, um, for the right type of person. And so, I'm happy to have him by my side. Nothing doing in that area, but... Power plant entry, yes please. Oh, this seems safe. Reserve power active. Commemorative reactor. The Bob P. McTavish commemorative reactor. Not So, he's not limited to just, like, entry rooms. Initiated installation procedure and started a countdown to nuclear explosion. Move quickly. 120 we had? Oh, no. Oh, okay. I'm not messing around then. We're on a timer. And we literally have to go... Apparently, the longest possible route. Moving, 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 moving. We saw- oh god, no. We saw that countdown earlier. This is bad. And I was wondering if it was minutes, days, hours, years. Now run back and hit that button before you blow up. Okay, on it, on it. Muscle memory is kicked in from my one time through the maze. I kind of wish we could see the timer right now, but... Gonna focus on not screwing up too hard. Oh, with plenty of time to spare. Completed horribly unsafe fuel rod installation procedure. <laughs> I love that it's literally a bucket that we place the fuel rod into. Why wouldn't it be? Can we close this? No, we can't. Uh, but never fear, we still have the English muffin. Maybe. No. He's not into it. But I bet you we can now flip the switch. Restarted the worst nuclear reactor in the world. Well, that's positive, I guess. What does this do for us now? Facility power status is okay. So what does that do for us, I wonder? Let's go back through the... Bob McTavish commemorative lobby. I wonder if this unlocks the doors? We saw the one door, uh... Was it up here? And we had no, like, no indication of whether we could go check it out or not. Or go through it. But... There it is. <laughs> The other door on the other side is missing its, uh, its... I don't know if you call that a handle in this scenario. Everything is... everything's stupid. Oh look, something for Vladdy to do. Hey, bear. Get to work. Again with the crawling! Stanya Veselo. What is Vladdy doing here? Is this Vladdy's purpose? 
crawling uh, and climbing through stupid uh, junk to get uh, more stupid junk. And for what? This stupid garbage? This is useless. No use. No purpose. Just more garbage. Garbage for idiots. Always. Garbage. Yeah, Tabia Lublu. La Tabia Lublu. Garbage worth bloody suffering. But I already know the answer. No, because it's garbage. <sighs> what stupid thing is next? <laughs> yeah, I actually love the bear. Glad he's really starting to hate vents. No, it's cool because you got a hook control console. Due to a communication error, this particular control console was designed to be removable from its base. It was lost approximately 60 times during the facility's existence. Obviously. Oh, there's the console slot. Oh, that's what these are! We've seen these outside, and I was wondering, like, why? So, this is what stupid thing does? Vladdy still think it garbage. That thing you did was important, probably. It seems important because there's, like, I think we saw at least two others up above in the farm area. So... Oh, here. Let me think you may have problem, idiot. You take too much Look garbage. at you, and look at what's on your back. To be fair, I put it there. Broke off its door thanks to a shoddy soldering job done immediately after the facility Christmas party. You could probably find another door to fit it on. Just not this one. Alright, I know the door. Because we've been diligent and we've pre-scouted the area, we know exactly where this belongs. And it is on the complete opposite side that makes me wonder, could teleports exist in a world of sentient corn? I do believe that it would be possible. However, we're going to stick to our roots and walk it over there. I have to imagine we're human just by the head bob. We've talked about this before. Not so much the head bob part, but just thinking we're probably human. Okay. Ooh. Looks like a spaceship cube, almost. Bob! I don't, I don't know why I went Russian on that. Bob, how is a one-way pneumatic tube at all useful? What part of order elevators did you not understand? This stupid thing is an expensive, completely useless death trap. Twit. Cordially, Ted. Alright. What do we have to this side? Ah, uh, we need a step ladder. Or I could just throw Vladdy up there, maybe. Doesn't appear that that's an option. What are these that things? Does not sound good. Oh, great. Chitanya Vesilo. Why is this place so stupid? Nothing works. Idiot American machines. <laughs> really? Well done, idiot. Breaking it will help. Stupid. You should take that dumb piece. See if you can fix it. We need to expand his vocab. Breaking everything won't help you progress in case that wasn't clear. Thank you for pointing that out. Broken gear half. New path is open to you. Head back to the communal grotto and down to level two. You need to figure out a way to repair this broken gear if you want to raise that giant hook to the sky. The fact that you know nothing about engineering, mechanical repairs, or finding things means that you'll probably go... This will probably go very smoothly. So this is a mechanical hook? Looks like something you'd fit a hook onto. And then we need to place the gear here. Um... Okay. Now, you're probably asking yourself... You're probably not asking this, but... You're probably asking, uh, it seems like it kind of tells you exactly where to go. And for that part, you're pretty much right. Um, whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we built this. We built this. It's fine. Uh, for the most part, you're right. There are, it's obviously, uh, puzzles 
to some extent. And if you're not paying attention to where you've been, it's going to be like running around a bit crazy. Um, but there have been a few th areas where we've been stuck. And so uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Like I like the way that it's done because you don't feel frustrated. It's like you can find the solution if you're, if you're diligent. Can we repair in here anything? I don't think so. Communal. Here we go. Oh, this is opening up. I know what this is going to open right here. Everywhere. Level two. There were, there were sentient corn up there at one point. This area was blocked before. Oh, okay. I was like, maybe Vladi didn't make it. Vladi always makes it for Mother Russia. Okay, who the hell's... What is... Tin Company? This is not uh, Bob's Sorry, Burgers. I told you where he is from. Vladdy is from small box. Very dark. Then stupid idiot brought him out the box. And it was sad. Now, we are here. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad that you've made it out of the box. Bob, you stupid dummy. Why you commissioned that artist to make these maps is beyond me. They're unreadable. Everyone is getting lost down here. You are here. It's like a Picasso styled map. Classic. Another honorary lobby. This is what? Three? Three Bob McTavish lobbies? Bob, don't care how good a deal you got. No more lobbies. Idiot. Night Danger 2. Danger. After an unexpected hit, the maligned author was forced to write a sequel. This time, he saved everyone the trouble of reading the book altogether and revealed the killer on the back flap. The novel actually chronicles the detective's struggle to return a pair of defective pants. So this is the follow-up to the fantastic book called... What is it? Night Danger. This is Night Danger 1 that we found in the farmhouse. Night Danger 2, the follow-up, is spelt differently. And it's spelled... Night, Night Danger 2, Danger. So, obviously, he's expanding in his capabilities. Okay, what do we have? A meeting room? Oh, this is, we were in this vent before and we saw the, uh, the lispy corn searching for us, I believe. And he came over here, he knocked this, he knocked this over. Knocked over that wine bottle. My god, Bob, what is this? There's no way any conceivable universe that we can turn this facility into a resort. Stop it, you dummy. Cordially, Ted. Yep. Outline for facility, theme park, and casino. Of course. This guy is just an entrepreneur at heart. Very slick looking proposal to rework the facility into a high-end theme park and casino resort. Has lots of pleasing looking graphs pointing upwards, so you know for sure that's a, that it's a good idea. Some notable attractions include Vatland, Genetics Kingdom, and Kitchen. Good. Okay, so this scarecrow, he has an arrow in his hat. A stupid. I thought it said like a mean stupid or something when we read it before, but maybe I was just wrong. It's it's a stupid. Oh, red marker. You mistakenly thought this was a blue marker, but you don't want to put it back down lest you hurt its feelings. Instead, you will draw a face on something with it because you know it likes to do that. Right, yes, I will do that, because I want the marker to be happy. Oh, and we're going to take the whole water cooler. You were mistakenly trying to pick up something else, but now you're in possession of an entire water cooler. You're too stubborn to put it down, so you're going to find a use for it, carrying it everywhere you go. You didn't even empty out the water. And why would I? Because I'm superhuman, and I can carry literally anything I want for an indeterminate period of time. Facility, oh, facility, facial recognition security checkpoint. Okay, we got lots going on here now. Hold on, where did we come in from? Wait. Yeah, okay, we came in from there. We're good, we're good. Hiya, Ted. Since you're so worried about security, I did you a favor and beefed up the doors here, room. You're absolutely welcome. Oh, God. Bob, you jerk. I can't even get into my room because of these stupid discount security measures. Fix it. I'm sick of sleeping in the grotto. Cordially, Ted. That explains the mess, I guess. I don't know what this item is. It looks like a... 
Oh, water cooler. And then... I don't know what. But something and then a plant. Like a half bowl. And then a plant will go on it. Okay. Let's find said bowl and plant. Workplace readiness report. Giving up the corn's ability to be weaponized on any level. The scientists attempted to see if they could be of any use in the general workplace. They weren't, opting to take naps instead. However, the corn did display a fondness for stacking orange boxes, which they did so every chance they could. The goal of which seeming to be directing the researchers to do what they wanted. And seemingly is they're doing the exact same thing to us. A rocky rock. It's our third rock that we found. We found a mediocre rock. We've also found, uh, I can't remember the title of said rock. Uh, boring, no, mediocre rock. This is Shantzi. And, oh, nondescript rock named Mabel. Let's check out, let's check out the new rock, Rocky Rock. Now, this is a rock that knows its place in the world. Unquestioning, unwavering, happy, and basking in its complete and utter rockiness. You've named it Shelby. Shelby is such an obvious name for a rocky rock, though. Sturdy box. This is absolutely positively the sturdiest box you'll ever find, except for the one you see immediately after you pick up this one. You now have what is known as boxer's remorse. This is a real thing. So, Bob, what do you think of this? See what you have driven me to? Jerk. Look. Look at this. Bob? <laughs> Ted. Ted statue, Bob statue. Look at that. It's amazing. Hiya, Ted. This is great. Really excited to see you get into the spirit of things. Added one of mine so we could be side by side. Really think it balances the space well. So finally, Ted's like, okay. Bob's made all these freaking statues of himself. I'm gonna make my own statue. So he makes it. He's like, look, I've done it. I don't I don't like what I've become, but I've made my own statue. <laughs> and Bob makes a fucking giant statue through the top of the ceiling. In classic Bob style. Okay, now, we saw that there was a desk below. Uh, do your thing, Bear. It's fine. We saw that there was a desk below, and I would imagine that those stairs lead to that desk. Let's finish the upper level search here first. Living quarters. This is probably Bob's room. Since Ted's is full. Oh, we can place plants in another circle thing here. Man. Bob loves sugar bagels, aka donuts, but pruning shears. Bob bought these to help maintain the large number of plants to decorate the facility. Small fact that they were all plastic and didn't need any maintenance didn't deter him in the least. <laughs> the plants, not the, not the shears. Oh, Bob's journal, this will be good. Written entirely in red pen. It isn't so much a journal as it is a mindscape, with occasional pictures. Massive, ambitious plans are written down and abandoned midway through inception, and sometimes mid-sentence. But he did draw what looks like almost a Vladdy in the middle there, but I think it's a cat. Might be a shark in the bottom right. There's a clock I can identify. A girl, a little baby maybe. Baby maybe. Uh, uh, invest in the middle with an arrow, a button. A hammock with Z's in, uh, in, like, in between palm trees. And then, you know, clouds, obviously. Let's put these scissors away because I don't want to get hurt. Bought in bulk and commissioned in a variety of materials. <laughs> this is a statue thing again. Bob seems to have ordered more statues than can possibly be fit inside the facility. Due to this, a statue storage fee is also included. He, he did indeed get a discount, but the cost is so outlandish in the first place that the missing zero is barely noticeable. <laughs> Again, all the line items, 2.5 million. Capuchin treats? A mon monkey treats. Bob mistakenly thought that capuchin was another word for delicacy and ordered thousands of boxes to, stack, to snack on. When he was told that the snacks were in fact for monkeys, he ate them anyways because a man who eats sugar bagels does not give two shits. Okay, a navigational chart. 
it's a small navigational chart of the Pacific Ocean with a very peculiar course plotted from the United States to an island in the middle of the ocean. The course has more in common with the movement of a small fly than any nautical vessel. It's apparently part of Operation Subaquanium Evadir. OSE for short. But owing to your poor understanding of all languages, you mistakenly think it's a chain restaurant specializing in Italian cuisine. Fair enough. I'll take that insult and move on. This light is having some problems. And I'm having a seizure currently. Another double bathroom. <laughs> Very nice. At least it's side by side this time. Computer with a door that... I think that's a door. Strange. Very strange. Okay, let's go down below. A bunch of notes on the desk I saw from above. Let's check the planner. 1988. The final page consists of six appointments. 9 a.m. Do nothing. 11 a.m. Pick up my new fedora and glove. Oh, we know what happens to this guy. Noon. Torture stupid corn for amusement. 3. Hide to avoid work. 545. Torture corn. 6. Initiate master plan. Now, we know. We know who this is. Uh, I want to say his name starts with F because I remember it started with F and matched like fedora. Um, Fernando. This is Fernando's journal that we just found. Hiya, Fernando. There you go. Could you be a pal and place the tour brochures across the facility? There's only a few hundred, so you'll be able to do that in no time flat. <laughs> Fernando, you cretin. Ignore that idiot Bob's request. What you really need to do is sort the samples of the genetics lab from least reactive to most, so go do it. Hey, Fernando, got a more important job for you than that. You need the statue directly above you moved about an inch or so. Scaffolding's already set up, so you'll finish it in about an hour or so. Thanks. Fernando, you lazy oaf. Don't touch that statue. We don't need yet another insurance claim. Instead, go to the second floor of the barn and observe the corn's behavior in their habitat for several days. And then he writes another note. And don't move a muscle. That'll throw the data off. Uh-oh. Hi, Fernando. Don't worry about that observation stuff. The corn will take care of their own notes. Really need you to hang about a few dozen new paintings that just came in. Be a pal and set that up, would you please? Thanks. Bob. Fernando, you twit. Don't lift a finger for those paintings. Instead, use this pen... Use this pen draft a letter to draft a letter for me. Dear Bob, you are a nitwit and an idiot. Cordially, Ted. Cordially, Ted. Oh, because... <laughs> okay, that's actually funny. Uh, draft the letter for me. The letter reads, Dear Bob, you are a nitwit and an idiot. Cordially, Ted. Sign, Cordially, Ted. Genius. The One Second Assistant. Hello. A peculiar book on how to be an assistant in the workplace, whose end appears to be to do as little work as possible. Chapters include how to shred everything, uh, an intro into hiding in the office, and shifting blame to the intern. The best book ever made about doing the least work possible. By- Oh, did you see the name? Dr. Chauncey Smith John. I wonder if we have any other authors named after rocks. Chauncey. Reginald? Don't have a rock named Reginald yet. We'll keep an eye out. We'll keep an eye out. Ooh, hello. Appears to be the only thing Fernando, the founder's assistant, put any effort into. Aside from shredding important documents and wearing fancy fedoras and gloves, it's a very poor plan involving jumper cables, a strange lightning rod, and somehow turning into an all-powerful god. Notes read that the stupid corn told me their secret, and Bob and Ted will be my assistants now. I bet you Fernando has a lisp. No, wait, Fernando's dead. And he hooked himself up to power and died. <laughs> I was thinking maybe Fernando was the giant corn that we saw walking around until I remember he's dead. Because we found his dead body out by the power thing. So he hooks it up, says, hey, I'm going to become this giant strong dude. Dies. At least now we know. At least now we know. All right, medicine ball. You could have taken a much lighter ball for this particular task, but that would require a grasp of logic that you really don't have. And I mean, we're already carrying tons of stuff, so what's the difference? Coffee trolley. Out of coffee. Hmm. 
We need to find coffee, perhaps? Coffee, coffee, coffee. Oh, Vladdy's in the wall. We're just gonna, like, pretend we didn't see that. Leave him be. Uh, coffee, 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 coffee. Nope, just tins. We do have this way, though. Cafeteria. I'm gonna guess. If I was a betting man. I'm gonna guess that there's coffee in here. Oh, you take plastic plant. You so many plant. useless things, idiot. You've said that before, Vladdy, but thanks. You'd think this particular plastic plant was perfect, if not for the garish pot it was attached to. You have an unnatural hatred for clay pots of every size, shape, and color. That's a real affliction that people deal with every day. Bob, where's that idiot Fernando hiding? I told him to refill the coffee trolley with Ranka weeks ago. If you find him, put him to work and do some yourself, buffoon. Cordially, Ted. We're hearing bleep bloops. Locked kitchen door can be opened from the kitchen. Okay. Now we gotta get into the kitchen. Flatty, this is probably a job for you, no? Do we have any vents? I'm not seeing anywhere for this box. This looks like glue or something on the other side there. It's probably not glue, but something red tipped. But I'm not seeing an entrance over there either. How do we get into this mysterious kitchen? It's a great question. One that shall be answered soon. I'm gonna take a break here, guys, and uh, when we get back, we're gonna we're gonna find our way into the kitchen. Oh yes.